Um, okay, recording in progress. We got it. Uh, thank you for joining us on another Monday evening. We are glad to be back here in the Michaels Community Classroom with our Monday night paint night. And tonight we are feeling the full effect of the holiday spirit. And Emma's going to be teaching us some hand painted ornaments, um, which are a lot of fun. So um, once again, thank you for joining. And as was mentioned previously, uh, this class is being recorded. So if at any time you feel like you need to just stop and watch, or if the pace is not exactly right for you and you feel like you'd rather go back and watch after the fact, you can always do that and um, you know access the recording and then paint on your own time where you can pause and rewind and all that fun stuff. So I don't think, there's too much more to say, so I'm gonna hand it over to you, Emma. Awesome, thanks, John. So like John said, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in with us tonight. I'm always so excited and happy to paint with you all. Um, tonight, we're gonna to be painting some really sweet and simple little farmhouse style ornaments um, to put on your Christmas tree. Um, we talk about this all the time, but homemade things are way more special than store-bought things and it adds a little bit of, a little touch of creativity and um, uniqueness to your holiday decor so this is going to be um, a sweet and simple one you don't even need that many different colors of paint it's going to be pretty simple so really really anybody can do this um, so let's go over what you're going to need to paint along with me tonight so of course you're going to need some wood slices these are just you know normal wood slices wood cookies whatever you want to call them available of course at michael's um, next you're going to want to have folk art titanium white folk art hunter green folk art pure black folk art lipstick red, and then our special ingredient, um, folk art treasure gold in the gold uh, formula. And of course, you can have any white, any black, any red, any dark green, and you will be totally fine tonight. Next, of course, we have our water basin, a variety of uh, brushes, a couple of flat brushes, a couple of round brushes, and also a little trick later, some water. So you can either have just like a bottle of water or a cup of water, or I'm gonna um, show you why you might wanna invest in a squirt bottle to keep in your uh, studio, your workspace. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. Oh, I also have a blow dryer just to speed along our process tonight. So what we're gonna do first, the first step is kind of the most boring one, but we have to go ahead and paint all of the backgrounds of all three of our coasters with titanium white. So something that I'm looking for is I wanna leave a little edge of this raw wood, just cause I think it looks really nice, but it's totally up to you. If you wanna paint your white all the way to the edge of your cookie, then go ahead and do that. But I like to leave a little bit of that raw edge. And tonight our big piece of wax paper is acting as our palette and as our um, what am, uh, workspace cover, because I tend to make a mess. Um, Emma, so somebody was asking, did you seal the wood first? That's a great question. Um, I did not seal the wood first. The great thing about folk art acrylic paint is that it goes really smoothly onto raw wood surfaces, like the one we're using tonight. So there's no need to um, like prime it first. Um, that's a great question. But if you wanted to seal it at the end for just a little added layer of protection, one product that I always love to use to seal my uh, paintings and works of art is actually Mod Podge Ultra. It works as a really great um, like top coat for your paintings. But yeah, no need to prime it first. But you're welcome to if you feel the need.
I'll put that in the chat. Someone was asking what the name of it is. It's Mod Podge Ultra, which if you all don't know what that is, I would have you check it out. You probably know what regular Mod Podge is, but Mod Podge Ultra is like a spray on formula of Mod Podge that you can use as sort of an adhesive, but you can also use it as a sealer. It's great. It comes in matte and gloss formulas and um, it is available at Michael's. So I would highly recommend that for all kinds of stuff. You can make mosaics with it. You can do sand art. You can, as Emma just said, use it to just seal other, other types of paintings that you've done. Um, you can use it in a lot of the ways that you would use traditional Mod Podge, but there's no brush strokes. It's self-leveling, spray on. It's great. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And it is water resistant. So you can put your projects outside once you seal them with Mod Podge Ultra. There you go. I think as far as whether you, how you decide satin or gloss, um, that's really just up to you. I mean, if you wanna really have that high gloss type sheen to it, then I would go that direction. But if you're just looking for something that, you know, particularly if you're using a paint that in, in and of itself isn't glossy and you want that satin look or even more of a matte look, then, then you can go with the matte finish. But um, I think for ornaments and stuff like that, the high gloss is really nice. It reflects the lights of the Christmas tree and stuff. So really good. Amelia, I would not use Elmer's glue. No, that's not you know, white, traditional white glue is not good for this sort of thing. And um, a lot of people sort of confuse it with Mod Podge, but it definitely is different. Mod Podge is definitely different than glue. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry these. guys so now um, I should have mentioned this too you'll also like to have a pencil for tonight's class so let's start on um, something simple we're going to start on our sweet little snowflake so if you have a set of three like I do let's go for maybe our smallest coaster or really ornament um, for your snowflake so what we want to do is we want to draw one line one long line going horizontally in the middle of our ornament, okay? So we wanna be mindful too. We want to leave about half an inch of space on either side. So starting a half inch in, we're gonna go over. And notice we're not using a ruler because the more natural it looks, the more farmhousey and the more um, like homemade it, it will look. And that's that's what I'm looking for tonight. I think that looks so special. So we don't want it to be perfect. So once you have your line like this, we're gonna kind of flip it. So maybe like right here, cause see the pattern we're trying to make? We're not trying to totally dissect our line. Um, you know, in, in the middle, but we're gonna place two more lines here and here. So we're kind of gonna make an X over the line that we just made. So let's draw the first part of our X over that line. And then again, stopping about a half inch before you get to the edge. And then we're finishing that X, that right here. And the good thing about using a pencil, of course, is that if you're not pleased with the lines you created, then you can go ahead and erase them or paint over them. Okay, so I like to start from the outside and work my way. You know what, I just said that, but um, now I'm over rethinking that. So I like to start from the inside and work my way out because you see this little intersection where the snowflake really starts? We want that to look fairly even. So let's go ahead and try our best to evenly space 
those little points. So we want um, where that little V touches our main line to kind of be at the same point as we go around or the same um, distance as we go around, okay? And if it's not as even as you would like it to be, then you can go ahead and kind of redraw it. Okay, and then we're gonna work outwards. Just trying your best to make your lines even, but if they're not, it's not the end of the world. And then finally, one more line coming at the end. And that's why we left that half inch of space. We're gonna sketch that out as well. Okay, then it should look something like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some pure black to our palette. Is this open? Yep. And this is where our spray bottle comes in, you guys. So I have this spray bottle with just regular tap water in it. And instead of having to go to the sink and grab a fresh cup of water, if you want clean water to water down your paint a little bit, my friend in our studio, Sherry Ragsdale, um, came up with this, you know, it seems pretty obvious, but it's just one of those things where you don't think about it until you see it. Um, she just keeps a little squirt bottle of water so that she always has clean water and she doesn't have to worry about like knocking it over or something to water down her paint with. So I'm gonna just squirt a tiny bit onto my black because we're trying to um, water down our paint just a little bit so that um, we're not trying to like change the opacity at all. But what we wanna do is we just want to water down the paint just enough so that it really, bulk art is so rich and creamy. We want it to be so, so, so smooth that it's almost like ink. So we're just blending our water and our paint. We get that really nice inky consistency. Okay, I think we have it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in all those lines that we sketched out with this one liner brush. You can use a round brush, you can use a liner brush like I'm using, this is a one liner. Um, just a small round or liner brush you have will work fine. And a lot of times when I am trying to make super straight lines like this, I like to try to hold my elbow in place kind of as an anchor. And if I'm just trying to make one long vertical line, um, I like to hold my elbow down and just kind of, you know, kind of tilt it. So it's almost like, a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like a pendulum kind of, or uh, I don't know, an anchor point, some, I don't know. I think protractor. A protractor. Nice. <laughs> Let's get all mathematical with it tonight. Maybe that's not. <laughs> oh, a fulcrum. Oh, Look that Alicia getting all geometric with us. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you. One of the things I notice is you keep rotating your painting. I feel like a lot of people don't feel like they can do that for whatever reason. So they're trying to do some of them upside down and some of them towards them, but. Yeah, um, I always say you guys work 
you know, with your painting, work smarter, not harder. I'm always moving around my painting just because it makes it so much easier to, for me. If my if I feel most comfortable making a brush stroke in a certain way, then I don't want to totally, you know, um, uh, uh, like what's the word? <laughs> I can't speak today. Um, come on, John used to be in the contort myself to <laughs> contort myself to. Uh, you know, do something maybe like a more proper way. If you want to move your canvas around, move your surface around, so that it's more comfortable for you, then by all means do that. For sure. And not just little ornaments either, because when I see all of our teachers painting, you know, Andy, whoever it is, I mean, they're turning the whole dang canvas and there's no, re no reason not to. Yeah, exactly. There's no reason not to. Unless you're painting a mural on a wall or something, in which case you don't have a chance to, but. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> you know, some of my most favorite paintings are my favorite because I remember how much fun I had painting them and not because they're the most beautiful to my personal style, but I just remember, you know, how much fun I had painting them. That's okay, what it's all about. Exactly. We're almost done with this little snowflake guy. Super cute. Yeah. So we're going to set him aside to dry and then start working on the next one. So we're going to hit this one next. OK, I'm going to move these out of the way so we don't get confused. We're going to do this guy next. So um, if you are really trying to uh, try to coordinate the sizes of your wood slices to fit your specific ornaments, then I would say for this next one, if you have one that's a little bit uh, kind of wider, that will um, work well to add a word on top. So see, this is a little bit more cylindrical and this is a little bit more stubby. So maybe I'm going to choose him. OK. Um, so grab your pencil again, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle space of our ornament, and we're going to put a little dot. Okay, so now around the dot, we are going to sketch a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to make a circular shape. Okay, now on either side, we're going to go ahead and freehand our J and our Y to make our word joy. And these are pretty easy letters. So if you don't feel confident with like your calligraphy skills or just your hand lettering skills in general, um, these are two pretty easy letters. So I have faith that all of you guys at home can do this. See, super duper easy. And we might even make our circle a tiny bit bigger. Okay, so that's what we're working with right now. And now we're going to introduce some of our lipstick red to our palette. And go ahead and grab your um, like either 10 inch flat or Sorry, not 10 inch, but your 10 flat or your 12 flat. I reach for my 10 and I'm white now, white now, I sound like my little four year old niece. Right now, I'm going to dip my um, flat brush into my lipstick red and go ahead and paint in my circle. Okay, once your circle is all filled in with red, 
I'm going to go ahead and um, add a touch of black to um, part of my red. I'm just trying to darken my red color, okay? And by mixing our black and our red together, we're looking for a kind of deep burgundy color. And the reason we mix this color is because this color is gonna be the shadow of our little bulb ornament. So the kind of brush stroke that we're gonna do to make this shadow, I'll show you guys on my palette. We're gonna start with our flat brush perpendicular to our uh, surface and we're gonna to touch with not a lot of pressure. And then we're gonna sweep down and across. And as we do that, we're going to apply more pressure as we get to the middle and then kind of lighten up on the pressure as we get to the other side. And that's how we get that little U shape. It's kind of like a smiley. So you guys can practice that a couple times on your palette. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the real thing on my ornament. So I'm gonna start here. I'll bring it up so you guys can see. I'm going to start here. I'm going to swoop down, applying more pressure right about here. And then I'm going to swoop back up. And then we get that little shadow. Maybe we'll touch it up a bit here. Do another little follow through. A touch of water to our paint because it kind of dried up on us a tiny bit. Beautiful. Okay, so now since our brush has a little bit of black on it mixed with our red, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush. Okay, and now that our, um, now that we have a little bit of our watered down black and we don't want it to dry up, we're going to go ahead and use that to um, paint our J and our Y. So we're using some wax coated palette paper tonight and that is a really great um, surface to use for your palette when you have to water down your paint because of course if you're using something like a paper plate or anything else that's absorbent like that, then it's gonna pull in all that water. And so if you water down your paint, um, then of course it'll dry a, a lot more quickly than we would want it to. So that's a great uh, reason to use some non-absorbent -abs uh, palette surface like this, wax coated palette paper, um, a styrofoam plate even. I know a lot of you guys at home have really creative palettes that you guys like to use. Okay, let's fill this in. Okay, you guys, and with our black, you see we have our little um, topper of our ornament. Let's go ahead and do that. So all our little topper really is, is um, kind of half of a square <laughs> and then some little teeny tiny hatch marks in it to kind of make it look like it's um, like a crinkled. So you can sketch this out too much water. You can sketch this out if you feel more comfortable doing that or if you're feeling brave, then go ahead and um, start painting like I am. really simple. 
Okay, now we're gonna rinse our brush. To finish off this ornament, we're gonna go ahead and mix a little bit of um, red, some of our lipstick red with our tight, or sorry, yeah, yeah, our titanium white. I had that right. Get a little bit of white and a little bit of red, mix it up. And we're looking for this, you see how we added a little bit of highlight? That's the color that we're going for, that pretty pink color. So we might need to add a little bit more red to ours. Okay, so whenever you mix your paint with the brush that you're gonna to use to paint your next step, it's always a good idea to offload your brush because you probably have way too much paint on your brush. So I'm gonna offload my brush. And now what we're gonna do is on the top side of our ornament, we're gonna make a little comma stroke. So kind of like this, applying less pressure. And then as we go to the other side, we're applying more pressure. So kind of a similar deal as before, we're applying less pressure as we stroke along. And then instead of applying the most pressure in the middle, we're going to apply the most pressure in the end. Kind of touch down like that and we get that comma. I got so much paint on my sweater, that's okay. The hazards of painting in long sleeves. I know, and I and I really, really know better than this. <laughs> I feel like once a week I do the walk of shame over to the um to the sink, like covered in paint, and somebody like calls me out on it, and I'm like, I know, I did it again. It's always me. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna start at the top, and like you guys can see here, um, we have that little dot, and then we go with our longer stroke. So we're going to dot. And then we're going to practice that stroke that we just did. And more pressure at the end. Perfect. Okay, and now you guys can see we have another little dot, a little highlight at um, where our little shadow ends. And it's a little bit bigger than our first dot. At least this time, um, I stained a part of my sweater that people won't see a lot. <laughs> it could be worse. It has been much worse. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to work on our last ornament, our cute little Christmas tree. So uh, you might have guessed it. It's time to introduce some um, Hunter Green to our palette. Is everybody doing okay? We keep it up? I think so. All right. All right. Good. So we are going to once again grab um, either a flat brush. I mean, I'm sorry, not a flat brush, a, either a round brush or a liner brush. You know, I'm probably going to go with a round brush myself. Okay, so whenever I am about to start painting, um, if I, you know, can't decide if I want to kind of sketch it out first, I at least like to know kind of the dimensions of whatever shape I'm going to start painting. So in order to do that, I'm going to mark out my dimensions for my Christmas tree. So I'm going to lay my ornament so that the tallest part is going vertically. And I'm going to kind of somewhere in the middle, leaving some room for our star, I'm going to put a little dot that will signify the top, the tippy top of our Christmas tree. And then just kind of looking, um, tracing my finger down, I'm going to make another dot on the other end. They're kind of, you know, equidistant um, from the edges, just directly under it. 
And then I'm going to make another dot on the left and another dot on the right. Kind of signifying the ends of the Christmas tree. Okay, so with our round brush, we're gonna pick up some hunter green. And I'm using this three inch round, but if you have a larger rounder brush, that's fine. If you have you know, a smaller one, that's okay too. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do um, a similar stroke, applying more pressure in the beginning this time. And then as we kind of pick up and lift off, we're gonna apply less pressure. And it's gonna be like this creating branches as we go to fill in our Christmas tree. So we're gonna start, this is the base of our Christmas tree that we marked off with our pencil. And we're gonna kind of fall in as we swoop. So right now we're just kind of filling in the base. So we kind of get like a tentacle octopus kind of deal going on. <laughs> and then as we work our way up to the tippy top, we're going to get more narrow and more narrow as we come up. And I see that comment right now I'm using hunter green, but you can use any type of dark green. You can use thicket, um, whatever you have. And if you don't want to use dark green, Heck, this would look cute with like some lime green, aqua, um, hot pink. Use whatever you have. Okay, getting more narrow as we come up. And really, I'm just kind of worried right now about filling in like the outline. I'm not so worried about the middle as of yet. Um, now that the middle is empty, we're just going to use our round brush and kind of fill that in like that. Some of those bigger white spaces. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix some of our dark hunter green with some of our white and mix that until we get a nice light green color. Maybe a tad bit more green. And this is just going to add kind of some dimension to our tree so that it's not just one single solid color. Okay, and we're going to do that same kind of brush stroke, but kind of falling on the underside of our branches. Show you guys what I mean and sweeping up. And um, kind of, you know, last time when we were um, applying just our regular base hunter green down, you might have noticed I was reapplying paint to my brush pretty much at every stroke, but we don't want quite as much paint on our brush this time around. So I'm not really picking up much paint. I'm just kind of working with the paint that I have on my brush. We don't need a whole lot on our brush. And then after I'm done adding my lightened green color, I'm gonna offload and I'm going to pick up a little bit more hunter green. And just in the areas that I think is too much light green, I'm going to apply some hunter green too. And you should have something like this at the end. Just a really sweet, simple Christmas tree. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush. Lastly, the color that you've all been waiting for. We have some beautiful treasure gold. So if you don't know about treasure gold, if you're new to paint night or you're new to any plaid classes, um, we love treasure gold. It is the most metallic paint on the market that is non-toxic. It is, I'm not just saying this, it really is mirror-like. Um, it is a stunning, stunning paint. And we're gonna use it in our uh, painting tonight. So we're gonna use our treasure gold to paint our star. So I'm taking my two inch flat brush and we're just kind of gonna go ahead and paint a loose star shape. So we're gonna paint a line and then a line intersecting that. So we're making like an X. Give my X. And now we're gonna 
intersect that X, kind of like our snowflake. So we get a little tiny star, cute. So we can go ahead and rinse our brush now. Now, using the end of our brush, we're gonna go ahead and dip the end of our brush in our treasure gold and actually use the end of our brush to make some little ornaments. It's a great little polka dot tool. I'm gonna try my very best not to dip my sleeve in any more paint, no promises. Okay, so rinse, not rinse, but wipe off the end of your brush with a paper towel and go ahead and do the same thing that we did with our treasure gold, but now switch to your red. And place those ornaments wherever your heart desires. Ta-da! Yeah. Emma, PB just said, these are precious and so stress-free. Fuchsia, lime green, aqua, so fun. It's totally but true. You can use whatever colors you want. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a special part about these little ornament groupings is you only need four colors. You really only need the black and the white. And then if you want to make your ornament like a, you know, teal, then do that. If you want to make your Christmas tree a um, hot pink, then do that because, you know, the accents and the um, shadows, the highlights and the shadows, you just add white and black to whatever color you're using. So you know, the opportunities are endless. Okay, you guys, so let's round up what we've done so far to add our finishing detail. Okay, so as you guys can see in our finished grouping, there is some cute little splatter on all of these. And um, just so you guys can know what I did, I used a different color splatter for each ornament grouping. So for our joy here, I added a splatter of hunter green. For our snowflake, I added a splatter of treasure gold. And then for our Christmas tree, I added a splatter of black. So I think for all of them tonight, I'm gonna do a splatter of treasure gold so that I can teach you guys the technique. And then if you wanna do them all treasure gold, if you wanna do them all green, all red, um, totally up to you. Although I will say I did do one ornament when I was creating these with red and um, it looked it looked a little bit creepy because there was a bunch of red splatter. A little bit like there. Dexter was paint, painting on your ornament. Yeah, a tiny bit. So that's just a fair warning for you guys at home. Maybe um, don't do the red unless that's your thing. Um, can you hold up the joy ornament so yeah. that someone can see the detail there? So you just have the shadow along the lower left side and then your highlight along the top. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so let's use our hunter. Did I say hunter? I think I said treasure gold. We'll use, use our treasure gold. gold. Okay, to um, add our splatter tonight. So we are going to add a little bit of treasure gold to our palette. Okay, just a little dollop. And we're gonna add a, a squeeze or two of our fresh water. Maybe three. Okay, and now I'm gonna take um, you know, you can, it's kind of totally up to you. You can use a flat brush, you can use a round brush, um, whatever you have, because we're not going to be painting with this. This is just going to be act as like a kind of a, a tool. Paint brushes are tools too, now that I say that out loud, but we're not going to be painting with it. <laughs> you guys will see. Okay, so we're just watering our paint down and we're really looking for kind of a little drippy consistency. So I'm going to do a test splatter. So you're going to hold both of your uh, paint brushes like you're going to do drum solo and you're going to hold your paint covered brush below and then your clean brush on top. I'm sorry, other way around your paint covered brush on top and your non paint covered brush on the bottom and you're going to tap. Okay. So as we can see, those dots are a little too thick for me tonight. So that just means more water. If your um, if your you know splatter dots are bigger than you want, and they're kind of taking um, a little bit of a longer time to fall down from the paintbrush, 
then go ahead and add more water. And if, you know, when you um, test it out and the paint just kind of um, is totally absorbed by the wood, then maybe you added a little bit too much water. So it's always good to do a little test splatter before you go crazy on your beautiful finished designs. Okay, much better, you guys. So we're gonna lay all of our ornaments together and holding it about a foot above, we're gonna splatter. This is the most fun part. This is when you definitely wanna make sure you've covered your work surface because- yes. And you're not, make sure you're not wearing one of your favorite Christmas sweaters. Wah, wah. I would never do that. I'm you're a trained professional, you know better. Yeah, I'm way too thoughtful to wear one of my favorite sweaters um, to something as messy as tonight. And really you just can keep on splattering until get your desired look. Okay, and I am pleased with that. So um, in order to, I'll try to hold the three of them up. In order to um, turn these cutie guys into little ornaments, then you just put a ribbon on the back, maybe some twine, really a little strip of fabric, whatever you're feeling. Fun. Oh. Okay, you guys, and with that, um, we just created another painting in just about an hour. Like always, I wanna give you guys a big thank you at home for taking the time out of your day to um, take this class with us and paint along with us. Um, we're always so grateful to have you here. Um, we wanna give a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to do this class for you guys tonight um, and paint along with you all. Um, I also wanna say too, um, if you wanna share your paintings so that I can see and uh, like and comment that on them, um, then you can put your paintings on our uh, Facebook group called Let's Paint with Glad, which has a, uh, an abundance of other awesome painting resources too. So I encourage you guys to go check that out. And, um, oh, I almost, oh, almost forgot. Um, I'll show you guys next week's painting. So oh, and while you're, and while you're posting, so yeah, I'll tell you, if you hashtag um, make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts, uh, Michaels, I know likes to see your stuff too. And I think they also do Michaels classes. Is that right, Chanel? And the hashtag Michaels classes. Um, so yeah, we definitely want, we'd love to see what you're, what you're painting. So please use those hashtags. And as Emma was saying, if you haven't checked out the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, um, I, we invite you to do that. So I will put a link in here too, or at least the name of it. And then Emma will show us next week's painting. Yes, and I just want to answer this question. I saw somebody ask a question. How do I attach the ribbon? I just use hot glue. You can use like some E6000 if you want something a little bit sturdier, but I just found that hot glue works fine. These ornaments are really light. Okay, so da -da 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 -da. next week's painting, same time, same place, is um, painted by the very talented Chris Williams. She will be painting this adorable little Rudolph. How cute is that, you guys? So if you're interested in painting this, um, same kind of deal, we're going to be painting this in just about an hour. Stick around for next Monday night and Chris Williams will teach you how to paint that adorable little Rudolph. So I want to thank you guys again. Um, it's always such a pleasure painting with you guys. And until um, next time, I'll see you. Bye. Bye, everybody.